What's up dudes, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today, we are furious in the country called Moldova. You are no drill, let's dissect the flag. The Moldovian flag makes a lot of symbols. The blue represents the sky, the yellow represents the sun, and the red represents for war. Or, it used to be a part of the Soviet Union. And the bird represents that is their national bird in the middle and and the bird it is a star and a bull and flower moon and di two diamonds. They're exactly all yellow except it. and red and the blue and then the bird is holding the leaves and also a spear and also the bird is eating or chewing on the important crops and then his hands are like red and this is the same for the coast of arms however the country is located in europe bordering ukraine and romania the two big giants of europe well not totally and the prince made in Moldova between Moldova, Ukraine, and Romania. And this was in the Kingdom of Poland, the Grand Duchy of Lithuania, and the Moldova between 1386 to 1434. And built during the Stephen of the Great was this castle over here. Still kind of nice though. And territorial in the Trinity of Brookfest. 1812, and it used to be a part of Romania, and it, it was during World War II, yeah, it was World War II, and then, and then, the Germans evacuating after a Soviet occupation in 1940, and then, this is running in Soviet and Moldova in 1985, and then, it declared independence in 1991, when the Soviet Union collapsed and protests outside the Parliament building in 2009, the President, Prime Minister, the Moldovan Parliament, the Presidential Palace, and this building, and it is the Association of the EU, mostly, and it is with meeting with Georgia, Ukraine, European Union, and others. And it has its own military and administration map of Moldova, no labels. And the capital right here is in Zentu. And other cities like Tarnit, Brotherhood, Bettenberg, and Central Moldova in the Darnit River and beaches, but it's went off, so sorry about that. And animals and a lot of stuff you have to think about before going to Romania. A lot of history, culture, food, and even football and soccer teams. And it's also not a part of the European Union because complications at the time. And their official language is Romanian or Moldovan. And their recognized minority language is the Andreas Russian or Rok. Ukrainian, and their ethnic groups is mo mostly Moldovan, but others are Romanian, Ukrainian, Zelenos, Russian, Bulgarian, Romani, Poles, and others. And their religion is Christianity, but others are Orthodox and other Christian religions. No religion and unfestivized and other religions. And their development is mostly Moldovan, and our president is Machan Sandu, had been president since 2020. And the prime minister, since 2021. And the president of the parliament is Edward Manjian. Since 2021, and the legislature is the parliament, and let's look at history. There was a prince via Moldova in 
46, and then 1812, it was the treaty and Moldova Democratic Republic in 1917, in 1918 with Romania and Moldova ASR in 1924, 1940 became a part of the Soviet Union. And then independence from 1980, independence in 1991, and administration of the United Nations in 1982, and constitution adopted in 1994. And this area is 33,843.5 kilometers, or 13.067 square miles, making the 135th including this region called Transylvania, as water, excluding Tetrania, is 30,334 kilometers, or 11,712 square miles, making it still in the less than 135th. And their population is exactly 2,597,100, excluding this region, makes it 138th, and their population density is 85.5 kilometers, or 221.4 square miles, making it 125th, and their GDP, in total, it is 6.6. 36.668,886 billion dollars, making it 134th, and their per capita is 14,257, making it 118th, and their GDP non-manual total is 12.396 billion, making it 144th. And their per capita is 4,791, making it 123rd. And their GNI is 25.7, makes it low in the list. And then HDI is 0 0.750, makes it high in this list at 90. And then their currency is the Moldovan Leo, or MDL. And it also has time, same time as Ukraine's time and Romanian's time. Like EET -E in the sum in the winter and the E E S T in the summer. And then their driving zone is right, like most European countries. Speaking of most European countries, let's see the presidential election of eighteen 88. This is kind of messed up because Grover Cleveland was like in like re election by loss right there in the spot and then went up again right there. Let's start in three, two, one, go. The 26th presidential election in American history took place on November 6, 1888. Exactly 93 years before I was, before Mr. Pete was born, Grover Cleveland had a solid first term. The country was, it has peace, and the economy was fantastic. He even got married to Francis Fonance, who was 21 years old at the time, become the youngest ever first lady in American history. Cleveland was fairly popular dude with along with Interney. Now it's if Cleveland was still alive today, he would be called as a libertarian and many Americans were quite bored on with that. He vetoed a lot of bills, tried to recruit government spending, had a non interventionist foreign policy, he wanted free trade. Cleveland was unanimously renominated by the Democratic Party, which was a special one because 
This was the first time a Democrat and president had been renominated since Martin Van Buren in 1840. Since the former vice president Thomas Hendricks had died while in office, he needed a new one. So if the Democrats nominated Alan Turnin, the former U.S. Senator from Ohio, was to run with him this time. You know, I mentioned free trade. Well, many people were upset with Cleveland's free trade leanings, and they wanted higher tariffs to protect American industries. Many Americans in industrial states wanted to vote against Cleveland because they feared them losing their jobs, and they looked again to Republicans. James Blaine decided to run for decided not to run for president at the time because he feared he might just further divide in the Republican Party. He backed both Benjamin Harrison, the U.S. Senator from Indiana, the grandson of former president William Henry Harrison, and John Sherman, who was the U.S. Senator from Ohio, a second time. The Republicans went with Harrison, mostly because he was a Civil War veteran who was popular with other veterans. He could have given a darn good speech. Oh yeah, he lived in the swing state. Thanks to Electoral College, Levy Morton, a New York City banker from a former U.S. representative and minister to France, was his running mate. It was the time for third parties. I would only mention two of them since others were pretty influenced. No offense, United Labor Party. The Prohibition Party keep gaining momentum. They nominated Quentin what, Fix, a general from New York with John Brooks, a religious schooler and a process from Kentucky as his running mate. Members of a new political party, the Union Labor Party, were running a bunch in the wild region, but were from the United and Front Workers, they nominated Alan Stoner, a former Greenback farmer and minister from Illinois. His running mate was Lauren Ren. Named Charles Conrad Chuck and Ben from Arkansas. The campaign was between the two front runners, and Cleveland and Harrison was intense. They walked in super close election. The main issue, of course, was tariffs. Cleveland wanted less, and Harrison wanted more. While Cleveland did not actively campaign as most presidential candidates, did not before him. Harrison did did eventually giving most speeches from the porch of his Indianapolis home to many newspaper re reports. His front porch campaign was similar to James Garfield as it worked for him. So why not? So here's the development. It was pretty messed up. Leading to this election, it was was exposed that William Wade Dewey, treasurer of the Republican National Committee, was caught buying votes in Indiana for Harrison. Remember Indiana? It was a swing state. So it was a big deal. The outcry of the, the scandal was a big reason why ballots filed ballots after they were cast in secret and not out in the open. And here are our results. Benjamin Harrison won, becoming the 23rd president of American history. Now it goes beyond. San Luis going down in Indiana, as Harrison probably would have won anyway. Cleveland even won the electoral vote in his home state, 
this time didn't even won his home state this time. Back in 1884, he was lucky with to win New York as they gave an election this time around. He had won home, Grover Cleveland's home state of New York, which would have been re-elected as well. I guess it goes around in Grover. Harrison received 233 electoral votes, and Cleveland won about 168 votes, receiving more votes overall, but he won about 48.6% of the popular vote, compared to Harrison winning about 47.8. The third time in five presidential elections in which a winner did not win the popular vote, vote but still won the election. Clinton... Clinton and Felix finished third with the popular vote being 2.2% and Alan Stewart finished fourth with 1.3% of the popular vote. Evelyn Morton became the 22nd Vice President in American history. As you can see on the lovely map, Harrison dominated the North and the West and Cleveland owned the South. As the First Lady Franchise Swain has now Francis Cleveland left the White House at the end in Grover's term. She reported she is reported have told the White House staff to take good care of the building. As of been returning for four years. Was it was she right? Did she actually predict the future? We'll find out. In the next chapter, a eh? 79.3 percent of the population voted in this election. Well, that was it. Was it wrong? Was it complicated? I don't think so. But kind of messed up a little bit. But it was fine. It was fine. I don't care. But luckily, the video is over. So thank you for watching this video. Hope you have an amazing day, a great day, and I'll see you next week.